next in the conference. Oh, we got to go. We got to go to LaTeX, of course. Okay. Um, I did not bet or watch any of the LaTeX games last year. What, what do you think? I know that their quarterback isn't returning. I think their top running back also is not returning. What do you think about the Bulldogs? Oh, yeah. Losing a lot of production. But Skip Holtz is a winner. Like, I mean, he's 37 and 21 in the conference over eight years, you know. He's a winner. So, so I mean, I can't, I can't count him out on that basis. They are replacing their three-year starting quarterback. Yeah, like you said, they're replacing a lot of production. That's pretty rough. They have right? the lowest returning production of any team that will be playing this year at 33%. On defense. Mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, it, it might be, yeah. Yeah. It might be a rocky, a rocky season. But I am going to say a man who's 37 and 21 is going to be having his boys playing better in December than in September. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, towards the end of the year, they have uh, some weaker opponents. Um, maybe get to ramp up the last four games. They, they play uh, the Mean Green, uh, Rice, the ULM Warhawks, and FIU. So uh, maybe we can, maybe that's a team to watch later in the year. But I think just an absolute stay away for right now. And they also still get to play the Roadrunners, right? So that's going to be another. It's just point. slightly earlier in the season, but sure. Yeah. So, yeah. what about the Roadrunners? T- tell me about the, the Roadrunners, Tony. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Oh, oh, man. Oh, my God. So, we are, bringing in, we are bringing in a guy who no one has ever heard of, okay? No one knows who the fuck Jeff Traylor is, okay? Mm-hmm. So, we're bringing this guy in. Mm-hmm. He is off. He's bringing in new schemes for the offense and the defense, mm-hmm. okay? The team did not have a practice in the spring. The team gave up 80 yards a game last year. Like, these final scores are in some senses flattering to the Roadrunners' performance last year. Mm -hmm. So, like, like, yeah, you want to say, hey, they're bringing back a lot of production. But what they're bringing back is a lot of nothing. Like, I mean, getting crushed does not make you better, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um... They have. They don't know who the starter is. They have currently three QBs that could possibly start on the ro- on the roster. Uh, it's just 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 not a good spot. New coach, uh, QB battle with three QBs. Historically bad team. Uh, yeah, I mean, even from a, I think I bet against them a few times last year. They're even like inconsistent to to fade. So I'm just staying away totally from. Uh, from the road well, I mean, what are we? Yeah, what are we gonna do? Be taking twenty eight points every week? I mean, it's not. Well, there's, Tony, there's nothing, is, we're doing that against the miners. We're doing that against the miners. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, hop let's hop let's over. Let's hop over to the, the, the other side the of the miners. state here. Okay. No, I mean the miners are another team that are kind of screwed, right? Um, listen to this. So this is from Bill Connolly at ESPN. His sort of like a, a summary uh, or preview from the spring. So quote: UTEP heads into 2020 having to replace its two top quarterbacks, leading rusher, five of seven receivers, two of three defensive linemen, five of six linebackers, and. <laughs> <laughs> Top three safeties. <laughs> they are so fucked. They are they are only twenty five percent ETS in non conference games. They're uh thirty two point six ETS overall. So this is a team that is consistently bad and will be even worse next year. I'm going to fade the Miners in almost every single spot that they play in next year. And I, mean, I found we, out... We can lay it into this team, absolutely. I found out one of the guys that work at, works at my company, a sales guy, he's a former uh, offensive lineman for the Miners. How much does he weigh? He's gigantic. Like, two, like okay, mm-hmm. so he weighs like... 290 300 i would well he's like a you know a salesman that works in uh, advisory services uh in and he's in houston so he's he looks like a reasonable person 
you know, he's probably lost 20 to 30 pounds of muscle, I would guess, but he is gigantic. Just a gigantic man. Um, okay, so <clears throat> UTEP, except when they play Stephen F. Austin or the Abilene Christian Wildcats, where I shall actually still back the FCS opponent here, um, they're going to play at Texas and just absolutely get demolished. They play mm. at UAB and will get demolished. They will this this uh, Southern Miss will play um, will play in El Paso and they'll get demolished. Um, there's a lot of kind of toss ups here: La Tech, North Texas, FIU Panthers, the Roadrunners. A lot of toss ups here, but I, I still think that I should be fading them in almost all spots. Definitely. At Texas, like no matter what that is, that's going to be Texas's first game, and they are they're going to put several dicks into miners' assholes for that game. That's going to be like a fifty-two to twelve point game, something like that. Uh, I mean, let's let's be honest. Nobody wants to lay seven touchdowns with Tom Herman. But we'll see how it goes. I agree with you. I won't be taking the points with the goddamn miners. So I got miners, roadrunners, La Tech. They are in for it. The Owls, the Owls might play because they bring back a lot of production. And I like Bloomgren, their coach's philosophy. Like that sort of Stanford run first philosophy. Mm. I like that shit for the Owls because like they're not talented. So like mm. chew up the clock, control the pace of play and all that. That really works. Like they bring back most of their top, t- uh, like most of their top tacklers, even like evidently. Um, but I'm not sure what you're showing. Well, they have the high, they have the second highest returning production in the conference at 79 percent overall. Um, the thing about Rice is that they have they lose their um, starting QB from last year, so they have five mm-hmm. QBs uh, who might start. So that lack of continuity is a problem, but. Yeah, Rice, I actually bet on Rice a lot last year. Um, They were a good moneymaker for me, especially in the first half spread. I can't find um, any data set easily at the moment that can confirm that, but I felt like any time that I played them to cover the first half spread, they did so. Um, And they ended up winning a few games toward the end of the year, Uh, so they improved over time as well. So Rice could be a really fun team to back. Um, the, the problem, mm-hmm. the bad sign though, they had a game scheduled with Lamar, uh, to open the season and has been since canceled. Mm. Mm-hmm. So mm. a bad, a bad sign, you know, like the rice, the kids at rice don't really care about the football program and they probably have an endowment of some sort, you know, um, they're a prestigious Southern university. They don't really need this from a financial perspective. I'm sure it helps, um, but they're probably it's probably not a big source of revenue in the first place. Their football program, um, so mm. I feel a little bit rocky about um, about the owls here. But I will be backing them. Um, but they have kind of a tough schedule, uh, both in conference, yes, and out of conference. So they have to play. They play Marshall, the Blazers, the Blue Raiders, who you like and uh, the Golden Eagles. So they have four really tough games. UTSA, La Tech, Mean Green, and the Miners. So they should have at least, you know, two wins out of there. And then out of conference, they got to play Army and uh, the Cougs, and Houston Cougs. So, you know, they probably have a three or four win uh, wins under their belt if they go forward. And I think they'll be a fun game to back again on first half spreads. Do, can you find that easily? First half spreads. Yeah, I'm da- going to have a database. I would have to. Um, I w- so there is the killer sports database, but we would have to play around with it. I think I tried to use it before, and it's <sighs> clunky. Let's put it that way. I don't want to bad mouth them because it's fucking free, but it's clunky. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean that dead exists, and I mean they played. Yeah, they played a bunch of teams close last year. They played Army close last year, right? They played La Tech close. They played Baylor close. So, yeah. Yeah, they and they played them close early. Let's look at Baylor, too. So, 
going in. Oh, no, that, that didn't work in my favor. That argument did not work in my favor. But I don't know what the spreads were. But yeah, the, at least the fine, at least looking at the final scores right now, they held them close. And they won three, three in a row towards the end. So right. this is, I think this is going to be a fun team to back. They're not going to win the conference. Um, they won't make it to the conference title game. But in, in certain spots, it'll be really, really fun to back them. Right. Yeah, I, I I like their chances if they actually get to play. Um, out of like out of the rest of the West, Rice is the best. <laughs> they are solid. Oh, that was an unfortunate mm-hmm, run. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, no, I should um, I I you know what? I wrote off North of Texas just because they lost the four year quarterback. Yeah, you you, know you should I mean? write them off and, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, also, yeah, they lack talent. They lack a quarterback. So, yeah, I wrote them off. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's like, yeah, Rice is really, yeah, the only other ones who might make some noise because they could win some games outright as a dog. Um, North Texas is the worst for covering since 2016 uh, ATS within <laughs> conference, 34.4%. So this is a team that we – Damn. Yeah, yeah. This is even – Because this because Latrell is 18 and 14 against the conference, so that's a hell of a fr- spread record on 18 and 14 straight up. Um. Wow. Yeah, and that's even with Mason Fine, who played into 2016. Uh, so that was their, like, you know, one of their, if not their best quarterback ever. Still, um, mm-hmm. not, you know, they've had a decent amount of wins, um, and they're, I think they're a pretty solid, you know, they're a high-scoring team, but they're actually statistically not that great on uh, for, from an over perspective. So this should be a team to fade as well for me in, in this I think they're they might eke out only one or two wins. You, you know, I mean, you don't want to take you don't want to back a team that's full filled with question marks. You know, Mm-mm. like every at every level, there's question marks. Yeah, quarterback, offensive line, defensive line, defensive backs. Like, yeah, but so for me, I like to you know, I like to fade teams who are consistently bad. So mm-hmm. not just because I got to be in my bonnet against them. So I think uh, North Texas and UTEP, they're they're going to be I'm going to they're going to be on my uh, on my card almost every week to fade. I mean, a dude who goes four and nine and then three and nine against the spread, oh, he's going to have some crazy numbers. <laughs> he's going to have some <laughs> nutty numbers, like. Uh, yeah oh my goodness i yeah i can't wait to see where they're lined are they still going to play texas a&m uh north texas Mm -hmm. no no they are playing the huskies the houston baptist huskies instead that is a hell of a wait that's they no no no. yeah that was supposed to be their opener but is a&m still on their schedule no Oh, geez. Well, fucking heck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They still have All a right. to be announced on their schedule, according to FBSschedules.com. All right, then. So, All right, then. So, yeah. So, overall. Yeah, it sounds like we. Yeah, you tell me. What does it sound it like? It sounds like that this is a pretty shitty conference overall. But. But we like, but we like a couple teams, uh-huh. right? Uh huh. There's going to be yeah. a couple teams in a couple spots that, that were. That we're looking to back. I think the consensus between the two of us, Tony, is that betting Marshall to win the conference is a pretty good bet. If there's plus 600, mm. plus 650, I forgot what I said. But that's a pretty solid bet. Because it's going to be them and the Blazers in, in the conference championship game. Maybe Southern Miss. But they're, if we're doing divisions, it's, it's Marshall coming out of the East, right? I dig it. Marshall six to one is the best bet. That's the best bet. Here. I like it. I like it. Yeah. And for me, the real best bet. I'm I'm already previewing it. September twelfth, Marshall at Greenville to play the ECU Pirates. The over. If I was a tout, I'd say this is my five percent play. This is going to be <laughs> the game of the century. The over, the over, the over. I don't care what it is. If it's 72 and a half combined points, I'm betting the over there. I don't care. I don't care what the market says. I know better than the market. The over here. Can't wait. So excited. 
Um, so I'm stoked. Okay. So 